people. So that's the difference between communism and fascism. Totalitarianism is just a dictator who just says, no, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do this. It's kind of a mix of both. Um, How did we get here? Well, we know the central bank in 1913, but that's not really how we got here. What happened after World War II, and I'm not going to get into the politics of all that, but what happened after that was the dollar became the world reserve currency. And to get that going, am I just boring the heck out of you? Gosh, I'm okay, good. <laughs> Hang on. I care so much, nothing, well, maybe not. But to get that going, um, uh, Bretton Woods established the, the um, World reserve currency would be the dollar. So all of the allies based their new economies on the dollar. And in exchange for that, they got a promise. For $35, they could always get an ounce of gold from the United States government. And all of their military would be taken care of by American military. We would protect them against communists. So it was the ideal central banker's dream. Because when all else fails, what do you have to do to prop up the central bank? Go to war because it's the most profitable enterprise ever invested in. And we all know gold, well, OK, plus we had all the gold of America had been confiscated back in the 30s to shore up the central bank, OK? So we all know we can spend, we can print more dollars than we have gold, okay? And that is what we did. And come 1970s, France said, I don't buy it anymore. I want the gold. We didn't have enough. So Nixon had to close the gold window, okay? When he closed the gold window, that's the time at my house when the conversations at the table were going crazy because my brother was in economics. So that's, this is why it's old stuff for me. But when he closed it, uh, in se that was 71. Then 1974, the Kissinger, again, you can call it a conspiracy, whatever you want to call it, it was bankers doing whatever they could to make it work, made a deal with the Saudis that all OPEC, gold, all OPEC oil would be sold for dollars. So anybody who wants to buy oil from OPEC, has to have dollars. So he saved the dollar. It, you know, it was a brilliant move as far as banking goes. But it also made us uh, military responsible for the Saudis. And it created a situation where in the nations who have strict usury laws, um, where we were parasites on their economies. So those religious fanatics had a beef that comes from something that's not that wrong. Not that I'm pro-terrorism by any means. I think there's better ways to deal with this. But that's not something we hear out there. And I think it's very important that we understand that we have been a parasite on the Middle East for how many years now? Since the 70s? Because an economy has to have the money reinvested in it. And that's the same thing that's happening to us in the United States. The money has been going overseas and not being reinvested in production here in the United States. We've had a parasite on us as well. Okay, it's central banks are parasites. They have to be because that's the pyramid script. That's what they do. Okay, so why has it been allowed to stay? Because whenever a law is put in place, it stays in place unless you can show that undoing the law would do less harm than it would to, to um, keep it. That's precedent. Because you cannot make laws and then undo laws. It would destroy the faith of the people in the law, in the system. Okay? And central banking has improved our standard of living. It's been great. We, I mean, look at the way we live. And this is, this is where my father was the same thing. Um, was saying to us all, hello, and this was the family fight. Look at us. We're in this house. You're all going to college. We're, you know, this is our, okay, but at what price? And I, I have to kind of, I'm going, as you can tell, going to my brother's side with this book because I think being American is more important than that. And then uh, what else is involved? As I was going down, did I go along here? I was going down these absolutes of our religion according to that tree, found it in the laws, Money is a sacred, and that is the number six, how, what we create is sacred. And it boggles the mind, but money really is something out of nothing. 
It's all faith. It's all. It's all. It's something we create to in order to create our existence. So it. And what is sacred? Sacred is something you create that affects all. Okay. So that's our number six. That's how our money works in a constitution. Number seven is love all. And of course, you know, our constitution fathers didn't love all any more than everybody else loves all. But what they were against is tyranny, and the way our war uh, army is supposed to work had. Um, it, again, it's as, as off base as what our money system is now. We were supposed to be a decentralized military as well. It was supposed to be, um, and I'm sure Andy knows better than I do the way the military works. Andy's just back from Iraq. Um, no, not that soon, but yeah. Um, but we were not supposed to be the military machine we are today. We were supposed to be uh, state militias run by the states. If the federal government was ever to take us to war, then each state had to vote how many men they were willing to send. And it was to be a big deal. It should never have been this uh, commander in chief saying we're going to war and off we go. Which is not exactly what's going on, but it's darn close. Um, and the reason for that was to avoid being in a position where we are tyrannical as our predecessors were in imperialist England. So what are we fighting for? I've been through it as far as what are we really fighting for? The fights to keep our dollar as the world reserve. That's what we're fighting for. Do we want to keep fighting for that? Do we want to keep that centralized system? Is it the best thing for us? We're facing a crisis that um, you know, I skipped. I had another video. Have you all seen Eisenhower? All right. Let me go back. I think we have time. We do. I skipped this video because it ticks me off, but I, I'm going to show this one first anyway. Billions of dollars. Just how much money do we print and have in the system at any given time? Let me start at 1929. Show me the... Here we go. 1929, here's the stock market crash, all right? Now, if you see, we just we were on the gold standard, so we couldn't print much more money. We had the stock market crash, but we didn't do all of the stuff that we're doing now, just printing money. Go ahead, step to the next thing. Then we go up to 1941. That's the Great Depression. Still haven't pumped a lot of money into the system, because, again, on the gold standard. Then we have World War II, and we take this all the way to 1965. You'll see it comes up. We had two wars. We had World War II, and we also had the Korean War. In 1965, we were having the Vietnam War, but here's where it gets sticky, because we had all these wars, and... We tried to dogpile on with the great, uh, the great society. Well, how are we going to pay for all that? Well, in 1971, Richard Nixon says, why don't we get rid of the gold standard? So that way, we can just print whatever we want. But we promise the rest of the world, oh, no, we'll never print too much. Really, we're good for it. I mean, look at our record here. We don't do that. Great society kicks in, and look what happens. Next point, please. Look how we've devalued our money. This is up until 2000 when we have the Y2K scare, where everybody's like, bury your food and grab your cash. The computers are going down. That's why the government put this little spike here. If you see that little spike, goes up because they just dump a lot of cash into it, and then they bring it back in. They pull it back in. But it's difficult to pull things back in, especially when you have a horrible event like 9-11. Next stop is 9-11. You'll see it's just a little spike back up, just a little bit. Remember how everybody was freaked out that the world was coming to an end? Do your patriotic duty. Go spend. Go out there and, and get into the stock market. Well, we did. And then this is the kind of spending we get. As you see here, the federal bailout's just about to begin. We're in, let me get into my Al Gore machine. Oh, it's a real inconvenient truth now, isn't it, Al? Look at this hockey stick. This is the hockey stick that... Al Gore was talking about with the, you know, the woolly mammoth coming back or whatever the hell he's talking about. Here's where we were in September last year. But then the Treasury decided we need to start printing more money. This hockey sh stick should take your breath away. This is devaluing our money. You know, Al Gore said global warming is not a political issue, it's a moral one. Thomas Jefferson said doing this to our children is immoral and I agree with him we have pumped all of this money in and devalued our money how is it not going to be worthless this has never ever been done by anybody ever before now I get angry when I listen to him